I like pop culture. So much so that I basically moved to chase what was behind that TV screen growing up. And I think that's common for queer people growing up, especially since it's very likely that you don't have any role models or people like you. So it's very easy to turn to the TV screen to find those. But there's not only something unique about growing up with TV, but having it shaped your perception of reality. And I'm not saying this because I grew up in a remote cabin that was hundreds of miles away from many stores of civilization, but because the reality I did grow up in wasn't exactly the best one for a gay boy. And I didn't grow up watching any homoerotic TV shows or reading fanfics about male characters hooking up, though I obviously did turn to those vices later on. But when you grow up in a space where your identity is constantly threatened, it's very easy to turn to video games and sitcoms for some sort of escapism. After all, these were places where I wouldn't be pressured to adhere to toxic masculinity like I would at school. But while I can point out all the flaws of my hometown in Puerto Rico growing up, I can't say that those are things that I entirely ditched once I got older. Let's start with reggaeton, which is a music genre that was heavily influenced by various other Latin cultures. So back in grade school, reggaeton was the rage. It wasn't just the music that the cool kids listened to, it was the music that pretty much everyone listened to. I mean, if you didn't listen to reggaeton, you were in the minority. Someone walking down the hall or the schoolyard with their speakers listening to Daddy Yankee was pretty common. It's what we would listen to in the bus while we were riding home or in a school trip. Songs that objectified women and talked about how much we needed them to suck that c You didn't like reggaeton or objectifying women? Well, then you're gay. Ah uh, yeah, there was no shortage of gay jokes at school, because if there was anything that was more fun than objectifying women, it was joking about how gay some of your classmates were, or how we liked to call them back home, battles. And while Katy Perry and Taylor Swift got a lot of backlash for having gay quips in their songs, that pales in comparison to all the shit I had to sit through in 8th grade. You see, a lot of times you don't really have to want to objectify women, but you also don't want to be made fun of for being a fan. So you find yourself having to objectify women in order to avoid your male friends from saying that maybe you suddenly woke up today and you switched your hard wires. You suddenly find it very attractive. And while I was never in that position, I could tell a lot of kids my past work. It was either go after those titties or be made fun of for wanting that <coughs> Homosexuality was so degraded that there was just no worse thing that you could be compared to. If someone made fun of you for having a crush on an ugly girl, then hey, at least they're not saying that you like boys. Because if they did, well, my man, are you in trouble? And as you can probably tell at this point, I can only relay my experience to the gay male. I can't talk of any of the shit that lesbians, trans, or any other queer identifying kid had to deal with growing up back home. I mean, objectifying women can be so wrong and so vile, like, who will listen to that shit? It's something that my 21-year-old self would never want to answer to my 9-year-old self. So like I said, back then in school, if you didn't listen to reggaeton, you were in the minority group. You also probably didn't cuss at school. You probably also couldn't wait to get home every day so you could hop onto the PS2 and play Battlefront for the hundredth time. You see, while well, none of my peers back home would say that I was a cool kid, I beg to differ. While singing about slapping a woman's ass and dirty talking to her to get her to sleep with me was my jam, playing emo video games about slaying demons while controlling a hot, white-haired, shirtless dude was. I never dressed or fully went emo, but I think my brother's endless replaying of Linkin Park songs in my bedroom while playing video games was enough to categorize me as edgy. Or just say it, one of the cool kids. The reason I can count the number of friends I had at school with only one hand was because I was above all those uncultured swine. My taste in video games did grow more mainstream as I grew up, despite me defying my sister's insistence on me walking around the house shirtless and playing Call of Duty like all the normal kids. The TV shows I watched also weren't that different from what the other kids in school talked about, even if the main subject of discussion was how flat Laura Morano's ass was. Which is why it really isn't a mystery that I was one of the few kids that was actually able to speak English in school. Yet, I began trying to find some sort of escapism in TV, as I started to understand the fact that my lucid dreams of shirtless Sasuke might mean that I wasn't straight. My mind unconsciously tried to find adults around me that I could potentially grow up to be like, and when it wasn't able to find any in my small rural town, it ended up turning to TV characters like Connor Walsh. And it's moments like those when I start to realize why exactly I disconnected from reality so often growing up. Because the fact that I had to turn to a TV screen to find what many other kids around me weren't really struggling to find in real life meant that I could only really survive with those fictional characters. I mean, if I liked guys, but there weren't any same-sex couples or queer people around me, then who exactly was I going to grow up to be? 
It was really easy to just ignore that question for such a long period of my life, and turning to video games and TV shows and movies was so comforting in that sense. Because consuming media didn't put me in a position where I had to answer that question. Well, most times at least. That world that I kept seeing on TV where people were able to be openly gay and not be made fun of or even questioned about their lifestyle choices started sounding more and more appealing as I grew more comfortable with my sexuality. So once I had a chance to move away from all those homophobic jokes and masculine-centric environments, I took it. My mind genuinely thought that being around English-speaking people in mainland US was going to be like being in a TV show or a movie. More importantly, I thought I could actually be openly gay. Once I started in school after I moved and realized that there wasn't a laugh gag incorporated into conversations with other people, I was devastated. Turns out that speaking to English speakers isn't exactly like reading off scripted dialogue in a sitcom or drama. Who would have thought? Oh yeah, and the fact that I'm not white and have a noticeably thick English accent meant that I was treated differently. That was fun. On top of that, the place that I moved to, North Carolina, has its own sort of distinct culture. Southern culture. You know country music and sweet tea all the way. Oh yeah, the Confederate flags too, but we're not really supposed to talk about them. It wasn't until I got to college that I realized that just like in TV, there is some diversity in mainland US. But I can't say I found exactly what I was looking for. My search for a place where I feel comfortable enough to fully express my queer identity is something that I'm still in the process of. Don't get me wrong, what I found is much better than the homophobic jokes and toxic masculinity I had to deal with back in Puerto Rico, but I still feel it's a half-assed version of what I'm looking for, at least compared to what I've experienced in other regions of the US thus far. My issues now consist of constantly finding myself in white spaces where I feel pressured to code switch. Seeing how whitewashed a lot of minority cultures are in the US, I've also realized how good I had it back in Puerto Rico in a sense. Even though we were colonized by the US, you couldn't really feel the presence of gringos in my hometown where I grew up. Yeah, you could argue that all those Disney shows I grew up watching were a way of filtering white American culture into our lives, but I don't think that ever took away from celebrating our own culture and identity in the islands. Now that I'm older, I realize that I've latched on to songs that I could have never really seen myself listening to when I was younger. Bad Bunny, Becky G, Carol G, these are all artists that don't necessarily objectify women, but rather celebrate sexuality. And even though for the most part it's heterosexual love, it's still a form of sexual expression that Americans don't really celebrate in any sort of way, or at least most white Americans. Even as a gay man, there's a lot I can relate to when we speak to reggaeton. And I really do value the ability to be able to talk about your sexual experiences openly. My bluntness with cussing and sex-positive attitude are definitely things that I can attribute to growing up in Puerto Rico. Pop culture will always be a huge part of my identity, there's no denying that. But I've come to learn that my Hispanic heritage and Puerto Rican culture are things that I can't shy away from. Even though I grew up in a very unprivileged and underserved community where what many consider to be bio music was the norm, I think I have a lot that mainland Americans will never be able to relate to. And I think that's a good thing. Because that does carve out my own identity. And in the cynicism of your 20s, where you're trying to figure out who you are and what you value, I think it's good to have at least one thing that you can hold on to. Therefore, I find myself blasting Bud Bunny from my iPhone in the shower in a communal bathroom that I share with 50 other people in a hall. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and also share if you think other people will find it helpful. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell if you're not getting notified for new videos. Links to my social media and other stuff will be in the description below, so please check that out. That's all I have for you today, so until next time.